This is Avengers Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast. Maybe you're listening at my website at henrywalker.org under audio messages. Or maybe you're listening at podpoint.com backslash Henry Walker. Or maybe you're listening at my YouTube channel, New Life Revival International Henry Walker. I want to start a new message today reading some of the Psalms of David, how he prayed when under attack by his enemies and people in the world. And we want to learn more of how he prayed. But let's go to Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Before we get into the Psalms, I just want to give you some background on the apostles and what happened after the apostles and the pressure that the early believers had and so forth. So around 90 AD, so many Gentiles came into the assemblies of the early believers with their philosophical th- teaching. They turned from their faithfulness. But we need to get back to our Jewish roots in Yeshua. I'm not talking about their ceremonial laws and all that. I'm talking about the, the, the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about following what Yeshua did. Anything in the Old Testament that was not changed by Yeshua is still in effect. He was the one sacrifice, once and for all, all the sacrifices are done away with. But it's important that we see the persecution that they had, the taxes against them, the, the followers of Yeshua, the Messianic Jews would go into the temple with the other Jews. The other Jews had in their prayer books a curse against those who would follow Yeshua. And so they would watch these believers in Yeshua if they would not quote that part of their programs their books. And once they, they didn't quote it, they, they weeded them out. So there's just a lot of tax on the, the early believers. And actually some of these early teachers, like Martin Luther called them swines, Messianic Jews swines. They said the synagogues are like houses of prostitution. Eusebius, one of the, the early fathers, said the Jews are like polluted wretches. It wasn't only the Messianic Jews, but Jews in general too. And so there's such a lot of pressure on Jews to follow Rome. And then you had Constantine in, in 325 AD. He made it into law. Other officials, early followers were, were saying they made it into law. He worshiped the sun. And he brought pagan police into that early Christianity, quote unquote. But it's just a, a lot of pressure on the Jews to, to not be Jews, just to survive. So Rome had such a a part to play in taking Jewish beliefs out of the early believers and forming their own form of Christianity. Let's go to the book of Psalms. I just want to share it with you because the Father wants us to get back to our Jewish roots in Yeshua. Again, Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. His mother, a Jew, named him Yeshua. Psalm 1, book of Psalms 1. Again, we want to talk about how David prayed in the midst of his enemies. We have so many enemies in the world. I'm talking about physical enemies. There's so many people that are against Yeshua. There's so many influences fighting against the Father. You have some on TV talking about that they're little gods. It's really a, a lot of new age out there taking attention away from the Father and what they can do themselves. Humanism. That's what brought Rome down when they were invaded was their humanistic beliefs. But in Psalm chapter 1, again, talking about David, how he prayed in the midst of what he was going through. As a warrior, there's so many enemies around him. And we've got to realize that we have enemies in the world. So many people in the world don't want anything to do with the Father. Again, they just want to go their own way. But Psalm 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It's important who we hang around with. Remember how I mentioned that when you read the, the Word, you want to confess the Word into your life, you say, Father, I'm saying these scriptures for me, say your family, and anybody else that you want to include, Father, and I'm using the terms we, us, or are, or you are. So, verse 1, Blessed are we that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Just be careful who you hang around. 
Always hang around with people that have more faith than you, so you can go up closer to the Father. But as the light is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Remember, Joshua was going around Jericho 13 times, once a day for six days, and seven times on the seventh day. But in Joshua chapter 1, Paul said, meditate on my Lord day and night. So he was meditating, going around there, because I'm sure the people at Jericho were laughing at them, going around and around. But it didn't matter. He meditated on what the Father said to do. Because the Father gave him a plan. See, I've given you Jericho. The Father gave him the, the plan, so he meditated on that word. In verse 3, And we shall be like, and we are like trees planted by rivers of water that bring forth our fruit in our season. And this is our season. Psalm 102, 13. The set time to favor us is now. All least also shall not wither, and whatever we do shall prosper. He gives his angels charge of us to keep us in all our ways. Even when we make a mistake, he's there to help us, protect us. The ungodly are not so, but like the shaft which the wind driveth away. So if you being have pressure from some ungodly people, eventually the wind's just going to drive them away. Stand on that word. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor send us into the congregation of the righteous. They're not going to be there forever. Remember, the Father is going to prepare a table for you right in the midst of your enemies. He's going to show up and show off for you, for us. He's going to show our enemies what he can do with one person who's obedient to him. The favor, we talked about favor, how it's the Hebrew word chen, which some people don't think we deserve what the Father blesses us with, but the Father does it anyway. Nothing can stop him. Keep your eyes on the Father, nothing or nobody else. Chapter 2, verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Father, against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. No way is that going to happen. He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Remember, he causes confusion in the enemy's camp. Just ask the Father to do that. Any enemies you have, ask the Father to bring them into confusion. Ready to fight against each other. Remember with Jehoshaphat, he put his praise and worship leaders out first and said, praise Yahweh, his mercy will do it forever, and they killed each other. There's so much confusion. Remember with Gideon. Gideon had 300 men going against 100,000 men. He had three companies of 100,000 men. And one of the Midianite soldiers had a dream about a cake of barley coming down destroying their tents. And he said, it's nothing but the, the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. And so Gideon overheard that and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have three companies. And when I blow the trumpet and smash the pitches of light, you do the same thing. And shout, the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. So they did, and the enemy just killed each other. They're so afraid. So there was a fear transfer be between Gideon and the enemy. Because remember, Gideon was afraid. He was threshing wheat by the, the grapes, the grape press. He was hiding out. But the father called him a mighty man of valor. He said, all I need is you, Gideon. Gideon had 32,000 men. He said, Gideon asked whoever wants to go home, go home. He was left with 10,000 men. He brought the 10,000 men to the Gideon Springs and had the water test. And only the ones that had the weapons in, in both hands and lapped the water like a dog were going to go into battle, and that's the 300. Because remember, in the battle, they need to hold the weapon and to blow the trumpet and smash the light at the same time. They needed both hands. So he knew the ones that would be faithful, and those the 300. Remember, we talked about Asa. Asa had a prayer when he was surrounded with a million men. He said, Father, you can help with many or by few, but in your name, we're going against them. So it's incredible. All the Father needs is one person to obey Him. One person to be in agreement. If you have nobody around you who is in agreement with you, agree with Yeshua. You and Him. We read in verse 4, that He that sitteth in heaven shall laugh, Yeshua shall have them in derision. Then shall He speak unto them in His wrath, and vex them in the sore displeasure. See, the Father can really make them very uncomfortable coming against you. Yet have I sent my King upon the hill of Zion, See, the Father set up David and nobody could pull him down. The Father is setting us up and nobody could pull us down. The verse 8, he said, Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. I claim that for us right now in the name of Yeshua, that we have the heathen for our inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for our possession. 
We shall break them down with a rod of iron. We shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Not kill them, just push them out of the way. Chapter 3, verse 1. Yahweh, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Maybe you have a lot of people coming against you. Maybe you have circumstances coming against you. Maybe you have all these bills that you can't pay. Well, the Father, I speak in the name of Yeshua, that the Father is going to get right in the middle of your situation and win. He's the ultimate financier. And I'm saying these claims and these prayers for you, and it's for those of you who have surrendered everything to the Father, wanting Him to mortify the deeds of your flesh, make you more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of your life. Love, joy, peace, love, and suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I'm saying these prayers and claims for you. You just can't not surrender everything to the Father and come before Him and say, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, you have to surrender everything to the Father. Give Him complete access to every part of your life. Don't hold anything back. Because He'll work in that part of your life until He's finished. You can't buke Him, you can't rebuke Him. In verse 2, Many there be which save my soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions. There's no help for Him in Yahweh. They're trying to say, hey, Yahweh's not going to help you. He would have helped you yesterday or a week before, but He's not going to help you. So you ignore that. The set time to favor you, as I said before, is now. Psalm 102, 13. Verse 3, But you, Father, are a shield for us, our praise, and the lifter up of our heads. Don't have your head lifted down and people see that you're troubled. No, no. Lift up your head high. If you can't, the Father will help you to lift up your head high. We can't lose with the Father. We surrender everything to the Father. We can't lose with Him. He always wins. The biggest obstacle we have is our flesh. We turn the flesh over to the Father. The rest is easy. But the hard part is be willing to turn that flesh over to the Father, to repent, to want to change. And Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Who's going to help me? But I thank the Father through Yeshua. He said in chapter 8, verse 1, Romans, There is now therefore no condemnation to me, as I walk not in the flesh, but after the Spirit. In verse 5, I laid me down and slept. I wake, for Yahweh sustained me. He gives sweet sleep to his servants. Solomon said in the song, Solomon, chapter 8, verse 3, you have turned to it, that Yeshua's left hand is under our head and his right hand does embrace us. That's the way we sleep. We sleep in him. Verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves around me round about. How can you be afraid when greater is Yahweh that's in us than anything or anybody in the world? Verse 7, Arise, O Yahweh, save me, O my Yahweh, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, thou hast broken the teeth of the Ungali. Look what he did with the Egyptians who wanted to bring the Israelis back at the Red Sea. Wiped out. They saw the face of Yeshua and said, Yahweh is fighting for them. They were scared. Yahweh broke the wheels. They all drowned. Verse 8, Salvation belonged unto Yahweh. Thy blessings upon your people. His blessings upon us. It says in Deuteronomy 28, he wants to open up his good treasure for us. Bless in the city, bless in the country, bless going in, bless going out. Enemies that come against us one way will flee seven ways. It's all because we obey him and surrendered everything to him. Yeshua is Yahweh our Savior. Salvation belongs unto Yahweh. Get Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-E-H, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. There's no other name that the Father has but Yahweh. Just a couple of scriptures here, Deuteronomy 25, verse 10. Deuteronomy 25, verse 10. And his name shall be called in Israel. What is his name? It's Yahweh. Yahweh is I am that I am. When you use Yahweh, he actively moves on your behalf. But to use Yahweh effectively, you have to surrender everything to the Father, as I mentioned. And so many people don't want to confess the name Yahweh. It really doesn't make any sense at all. As I mentioned, Deuteronomy 25.10, and his name shall be called in Israel. Remember, Yahweh appeared to Moses and said, I am that I am. Tell the people, this is my name forever. So he told Moses his name. Moses told the people his name, and people told each other his name. In 1 Kings 8, you can just write it down, verse 33 and 34, 35, Solomon prayed as he dedicated the temple. When your people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against you and shall turn again to you, Father, and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house. So he did say his name. 
Then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Verse 35, when heaven is shut up and there's no rain, because they have sinned against you, if they pray towards this place and confess your name, confessing his name, and turn from their sin when I afflicted them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain unto thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. Verse 36. It's important. In Psalm 22, 22, they said, I'll declare your name unto my brethren. It's important that we clear his name. So again, we're talking about how David prayed in the midst of his enemies, in the midst of being in the world, but not of the world. Psalm 4, verse 1. Hear me when I call, O Yahweh, my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. So I can say that for us. He has enlarged us when we were in distress. And sometimes it may take a wilderness experience, but at the end of that wilderness experience, when you pass the test during that wilderness experience, is a, a new level, a promotion, a blessing, or blessings. In verse 3, But know that Yahweh had set apart him that is sanctified for himself. Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. He set us apart for himself. You can say that, and I say that for all of us. We are set apart, sanctified in the Father to Yeshua. Verse 5, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahweh. We put our trust in Yahweh. In verse 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou. Yahweh only makest me dwell in safety. This is David talking. We dwell in safety. We lay down in peace and sleep for Yahweh only makes us dwell in safety. I decree that in the name of Yeshua for all of us. In the remnant, Psalm 5, verse 2. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my Yahweh. For unto thee do I pray. He'll always listen to us. As we surrender everything to him, he'll always listen to us. My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Yahweh. In the morning will, will I direct my prayer unto you and will look up. Look unto the hills when we come to our help. Our help comes from Yahweh. At verse 4. For thou art not a Yahweh that had pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with you. The fool shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. He loves everybody, but he hates their work. You shall destroy them as speak leasing. Yahweh will abhor the, the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, there's always a separation between the people that belong to the Father and the people in the world. Stay separated. If you join to the Father, stay separated. Be in the world and of the world. I have a podcast message not long ago about being in the world and not of the world. In verse 7, But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy, and in your fear will I worship toward your temple. Verse 12, For thou, Yahweh, will bless us the righteous. With favor, he's compassing us as with a shield. I decree that in the name of Yeshua. We have a shield of a blessing around us. Remember when Jonathan went up against that hill with his armor bearer. There's a sharp rock on one side, a sharp rock on the other side. We talked about it in the last podcast, 1 Samuel 14. The Father was protecting them on either side. And we know that Yahweh is a battling ram going ahead of us. He's our breaker. And behind us, he's our re reward. We have nothing to be concerned about. We're compassed about with him and his protection. Verse 3, Psalm 6. My soul, which is our minds, will, and emotions, is also so vexed. But thou, Yahweh, how long? You may be looking for help from him. You're going through so much right now, but he will not let you go through any more than you can handle. Just surrender to him and say, Father, I'm weak, but you're strong. Paul said, where I'm weak, you make me strong. He makes our weaknesses to be strengths. Let him strengthen you right now. I decree that in the name of Yeshua. In verse 7, my eye is consumed because of grief. It waxed it all because of my enemies. David went through a lot, but he praised the Father. He prayed to the Father. So much in the Psalms are prayers and also praise. These are songs. The Psalms are prayers and songs to the Father. Verse 8, depart from me, O ye workers of iniquity, for Yahweh had heard the voice of my weeping, and I decree that for us. Enemies get away from us, go and don't return in the name of Yeshua by the blood of Yeshua. Verse 9, Yahweh had heard my supplication. He will receive my prayer. He receives our prayers because she surrendered everything to him. Verse 10, let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. I remember when Sennacherib 
had surrounded Jerusalem, and one angel destroyed 185,000 the enemy. He went home. He returned home, and his sons killed him. I'm not saying your enemy should be killed. I'm saying let him return to wherever they came from and get out of your way and be ashamed because they could not win against you because greater, as I mentioned before, greater is the Father in you than anything or anybody in the world. And I decree that for us in the remnant. In Psalm 7, verse 1, O Yahweh, indeed do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. See, David turned to him. Remember in 2 Samuel 5, David had just become king, and the Philistines came to attack him. But what did David do? He went down into the hold. He went down into the presence of the Father and asked for specific instructions as to what to do. And the Father gave it to him, and he won battle after battle. And he named one place, Baal Perizim, the place of the breakthrough, because the Father gave him the breakthrough. He wants to give the breakthrough for you and I today. Everybody in the room, he wants to give us a breakthrough. Maybe it's been 40 years for some of you, but he's going to give you that breakthrough. Just receive it right now. And whatever area of your life that you need a breakthrough, receive it right now. In the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. In Psalm 7, verse 6, Arise, O Yahweh, in thy anger, lift up thyself because of the rage of my enemies, and awake from me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. He's talking about the rage of the enemies. There's so many people that hate Yahweh, hate Yeshua, and yet they want to build up their own kingdoms, think that they're a god unto themselves. They can't win against us. If they're able to attack us, they can't win against us. In verse 8, Yahweh shall judge the people. Judge me, O Yahweh, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. See, that's what happens when you surrender everything to the Father and turn the flesh over to Him, and He makes us more like Yeshua, bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives, then we're on the road of sanctification, and every day He wants to Make us more and more like Yeshua and point out those things that are wrong in our lives, that we're doing wrong, and pat us on the back for what we're doing right, and operate on us every day. And so we need to be judged by the Father every day, and that's what David is saying. Judge me according to my righteousness, according to the, my integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous, Yahweh tried the hearts and reigns. Let what the wicked are doing coming to an end. And I decree that in the name of Yeshua. The wicked out there, your end is now. In the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Father, turn them around to serve you. See, verse 11, Yahweh judges the righteous and is angry with the wicked every day. In verse 14, behold, the wicked, he each reveled with iniquity and had conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he, which he made. Remember Haman. Haman had a gallows for Mordecai, but he was on the same gallows. Not Mordecai, but Haman. Hey, whatever plans our enemies have for us is coming right back on them in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. His mischief in verse 16 shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealings shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise Yahweh according to his righteousness, and will sing praises to the name of the Yahweh Most High. So Yeshua became sin that we might become the righteousness of the Father in him. What a trade. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of the Father in Yeshua. Wow. Chapter 9, verse 11. Sing praises to Yahweh, which dwelt in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he make an inquisition for blood, he remembered them. He forget it, not the cry of the humble. That's us. Remember when Hezekiah was told by Yahweh to Isaiah the prophet that he was getting ready to die. He humbled himself before the Father, and the Father added 15 years to his life. It's so important to humble ourselves before the Father. We're totally dependent upon him. Paul said, in him I, I both move and breathe and have my being. Before we go on, I want to pray for the, the babies in the womb. I just want to bring a couple facts to your attention if you haven't heard them before. We believe that life begins at conception. The baby's heart begins to beat around 18 days. And around four months, the baby's heart is pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. And most scientists believe that life begins at conception. This is a statement from them. At the moment, the sperm cell of the human male meets the ovum of the female, and the union results in a fertilized ovum, a zygote, a new life has begun. And the college of pediatricians believe the same thing, that life begins at conception. 
And every baby is a beautiful purpose wrapped up in flesh. So we want to pray for the babies in the womb right now. Father, touch the babies in the womb right now. Bring them to a full birth. And Father, give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And if any of you had an abortion out there, repent. Ask the Father to forgive you and go on. Follow him. So important that we remember the babies in the womb. Getting back to Psalm 9, verse 14. That I might show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. Again, Yeshua means Yahweh, our Savior. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget Yahweh. See, they actually become part of hell if they don't surrender to the Father. We're going to pray for you in just a couple of minutes, but I just want to remind you of some of the things I've been saying on every podcast. Number one is that the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Start praying when, when the Father prompts you after 6 p.m. to pray for that day up ahead, even in the morning with the first day in Genesis 1. There's so many messages on my website at henrywalker.org about the feast days, which are very, very important. If we're following Yeshua, we've got to keep the feast days. And we've got to keep the Sabbath. You can't say keep the Ten Commandments and miss the Sabbath. And it's the Sabbath when you, you rest in Him and learn more, and then you have more power on the first day of the week to go out. And then it talks about those holidays that Constantine brought in. Research every one of those holidays and see where, what the roots are, the pagan roots in those holidays. All those messages are on there. And also, uh, remember, if your flesh is giving you thoughts of fear, worry, anxiety, impure thoughts, say out loud, Yeshua, I thank you for the crown of thorns on your head. That means my mind is protected by your blood. And that crown of thorns is around your head. So my mind is protected by your blood. I only think your thoughts in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua, is so very important. But let's go to Father in prayer now. Just put your hand on a computer, on a cell phone. And if you don't know that you know that you're saved, surrender everything to the Father and follow Him right now. And those of you who have surrendered everything to the Father, receive a miracle of miracles right now, where you need it the most. Father, I ask you to touch us all from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Everybody in the remnant. By your stripes we were healed. I decree that in the name of Yeshua, by the body of Yeshua. But Father, any miracle that we need besides healing, I'm asking, I'm receiving for us right now. In the name of Yeshua, by the body of Yeshua. And Father, help us to stand strong in these last days. Position us where we need to be. Help us to be obedient in everything you ask us to do, Father. Oh, Father, help us to pray more, to praise you more, Father, using David as somewhat of an example, to praise you the way you want us to praise you and pray the way you want us to pray. But see how David prayed in the midst of his enemies. We're in the world, but not of the world, Father. Keep us as the apple of your eye. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And as I mentioned earlier, remember the Sabbath, Friday 6 p.m., to Saturday 6 p.m. As the Father draws us into His presence during that time, He wants to bring us into His rest. This rest is a preview of heaven, which we will have with Him for all eternity. And this rest gets us ready for the beginning of the week, which starts on Saturday at 6 p.m. The Sabbath day rest with the Father gives us more power throughout the week. If any of you want to email me with any praise reports or any questions, you can email me at contact at henrywalker.org. C-O-N-T-A-C-T at henrywalker.org. I'll be so glad to hear from you. And if you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts, share, subscribe, and remember to next time. This is Evangelist Henry Walker saying greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world.